The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. Friends, this is Don Wilson. You know, choosing your cigarette is really simple. Just go by the taste. That's right. For nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And the cigarette that tastes better, cleaner, fresher, and smoother is Lucky Strike. First of all, Lucky's give you the better taste of really fine, mild tobacco. Remember, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, with a wonderful flavor of its own. What's more, Lucky's give you the better taste of a better-made cigarette, made round and firm and fully packed, to draw freely and smoke evenly, to taste cleaner, fresher, smoother. So, friends, for your own smoking enjoyment, remember, better taste is what you're really after, and better taste is what you get in every pack of Luckies. Be happy. Go lucky. Make your next pack Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in just nine more days, a new tenant will move into the White House. And tonight, since we can't bring you the distinguished and lovable tenant, we bring you the mean old landlord, and here he is, Jack Benny! Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, saying that I own the White House. But Jack, what I said isn't so ridiculous. Technically, as a citizen and taxpayer, you do own the White House. Look, Don. You own all the buildings in Washington. The Capitol, the Library of Congress. Don. The United States Post Office. Don. The United States Supreme Court. Don. The United States Mint. Don, stop it. What'd you say? What'd you say? <laughs> the Mint? What'd you say, Don? <laughs> I thought that'd get you, but Jack, it's true. You own it, I own it, all the taxpayers own it. It's like being a stockholder in a corporation like, uh, oh, like the American Tobacco Company. Well, Don, that's a very good comparison because everybody knows that the United States Mint is round and firm and fully packed. <laughs> and if it isn't, it will be on March 15th. <laughs> that I know. March 15th? What happens on that day? Well, Don, you wouldn't know about this, but people who earn over $500 a year have to pay taxes. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Don. Hiya, Mary. Mary, I said hello, too. I know, I know. But what's eating you? Plenty. All I asked you is let me keep a couple of packages of meat in your deep freeze. And this morning, Rochester sent them back to me. He said there was no room. Well, Mary, if there's no room, there's no room. Well, now, now, wait a minute, Jack. I happen to know that your freezer is unusually large. And just a week ago, I looked in, and it was empty. Well, it's full now. No kidding. What's he got in it? His Christmas tree. <laughs> All right, what's wrong with preserving a Christmas tree? Jack's right, Mary. It isn't any of our business what he keeps in his deep freeze as long as he has plenty of meat, like those steaks he served us last night. Some steak. What do you mean, some steak? If you didn't like it, why did you eat so much? I was trying to guess whether it was Dancer, Prancer, Donner, or Blitzen. <laughs> <laughs> they were not reindeer. Those were very fine steaks. Didn't you see the government stamp on them, grade A? Mine said Merry Christmas. <laughs> I wrote that on there myself. Now, look, Mary, we have a show to do tonight and a very important sketch. So let's... What in the world was... Bob! Bob, what happened? Well, Sammy, the drummer, he fell off the bandstand. What? Well, Jack, it isn't what you think. No? See, the boys in the band are just such practical jokers. Practical joker. Why, what do they do? Well, they took the electric wire that goes to Remley's guitar and taped it to Sammy's chair. <laughs> well, of all things, wiring up his chair with electricity. I can't understand Sammy falling for it. 
Didn't he suspect anything when he sat on those wires? Well, he didn't even get suspicious when they slid his pants legs. <laughs> Slit Sammy's pants leg? Yeah, they didn't have to shave his head. <laughs> that I know. But, Bob, I think the boys are going too far. Sammy could have gotten electrocuted. Oh, well, that's what the boys figured. So last night they took him to a cafeteria and told him to order anything he wanted. <laughs> Bob, you mean you went with him? Oh, no, Jack, no. Don't you remember I was at your house? Oh, yes, yes. Hey, by the way, what kind of steaks were those you served last night? Huh? Well, I went to bed, and every time I turned over, I heard sleigh bell. <laughs> now, cut that out. I invite the whole gang over for a steak dinner. Instead of being grateful, you all make cracks about it being reindeer. The only one that hasn't is Dennis. I can't talk. I've got an antler stuck in my throat. <laughs> an antler? Your hat is still hanging on it. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. I don't know why it is. I try to do a program and oh, every... Oh, Jack, Jack, take it easy. I can't help it. Dennis, why do you go around irritating people? I'm experimenting. What kind of experiment is that? Irritating people When you do it to oysters, they give pearls <laughs> Mary, you talk to him, will you? Dennis, you better sing your song Okay Dennis Day singing Heart and Soul. And very good, Dennis. It was excellent. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh. Who can that be? Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, I'm in the middle of a program. I know, but I want to tell you something. Tell me something. I just left the house a little while ago. Why do you always call me at the studio? I don't get applause at home. <laughs> Never mind that. What's so important? A man was here from a fan magazine. He said they wanted to print the story of your life. Pictures and everything. Oh, pictures too, huh? Yeah, so I gave him some that were taken when you were in the Navy, some when you were in Vaudeville, and some that were taken when you were entertaining overseas. Oh, good, good. Uh, then he asked for one of your baby pictures, but I couldn't find any. Well, what did you do? I slipped him one of mine. <laughs> What? Uh, then he asked me a lot of personal questions, 
And I told him you were the nicest, kindest, and most considerate man I ever worked for. Well, thank you. Then he brought up the subject of your generosity. Uh-huh. So I told him for Christmas you gave me a bonus of $5,000. You told him I gave you $5,000? What made you think he'd believe that? Boss, when he didn't question the baby picture, I knew he was vulnerable. <laughs> Now, Rochester, I have to get back to the program, so I'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. What now? Uh, a few minutes after you left the house, an electric flute, the fuse blew out and your freezer went off. <laughs> an electric what blew out? A fuse. A fuse, huh? Uh, and my, uh... And your, your freezer went out. My freezer went off, uh, I see. Good. Well, what happened to all the things I have in it? Well, your Christmas tree is all right, but two snakes thawed out and ran up the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> ran up the... Now, that's ridiculous. Rochester, why did you make up a thing like that? Boss, when you start with applause, you got to end with a laugh. <laughs> I hope I am as fortunate. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rochester may not be a good butler, but he's certainly... He's certainly... Hmm. Well, what's the matter, Jack? I wrote an ad lib in here, and I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, Jack, uh, what about the important sketch you said we were going to do tonight? Oh, yes. So now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we will present our version of that wonderful Paramount picture, The Road to Ballet which stars Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, and Dorothy L'Amour. You know, I saw it last night, Jack, and it really is a funny picture. I know. Now, since I'm a comedian, I'll play Hope's part. And since Bob Crosby is Bing's brother, he'll play his part. And Dennis... Okay, but I look lousy in a sarong. <laughs> <laughs> look, you're not playing Dorothy L'Amour's part. You're going to be a native we met in the jungle. A headhunter. A headhunter? Yes, and before we start, go hunt for your own. <laughs> I had a joke in here anyway. <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, we were going to have Dorothy L'Amour on the show, but at the last minute, something happened. She wanted money. Oh, quiet. <laughs> now, Mary, you're going to be Dorothy L'Amour. Okay, but with Bing and Bob in the picture, who's going to get me? The May Company, if you keep making those cracks. <laughs> now we, that we've done all the casting, let's get on with our sketch. The Road to Ballet. Wait a minute, Jack. What about me? Oh, yes, Don. You've got a very important part. I have? Yes. Paint a white line down your back. You're going to be the road. <laughs> <laughs> and lie straight out. I don't want any detours. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction of the evening, The Road to Ballet. My name is Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> My vaudeville partner, Bing Crosby, and I were stranded in Australia. We were broke and hungry and had no friends in Australia, so finally, in desperation, we became pickpockets. The first pocket I picked, nothing. The second pocket, nothing. The third pocket bit me. I had picked the pouch of a kangaroo. <laughs> After days of continued bad luck, we were walking down the street when I turned to my partner and said, Gosh, four days and nothing to eat. I'm starved. Say, Bing, when the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. <laughs> I knew there was something Bing could do that he couldn't. <laughs> Bing, I can't understand why I'm a failure. I'm a talented dancer. I'm a wonderful singer. I'm a great actor. I'm a big star. You're a big hand. Look, it's Bob Hope. Bob. 
Bob, Bob Hope, what a surprise. Some surprise. <laughs> we had three rehearsals. I turned down the first two scripts, finally had to call in my own writers, and he's surprised. <laughs> Look, Bob, you can go home if you want. <laughs> I've got a monologue here that will run through Amos and Andy, Edgar Bergen, and right up to the weather report. <laughs> weather report, dull today, funny tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something. Rochester may not be a good butler, but he certainly... Oh, my goodness, I wrote it on the wrong page. <laughs> Bob, I'd like you to say hello to the other... Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. just a second, Jack. Huh? A full minute has passed and you haven't said it. Oh, yes. The road to Bally. That's better. <laughs> Jack, why did you have to say road to Bally? It's either that or money. Hiya, Mary. <laughs> hello, Bob. Say, Bob, you know Bing's brother, of course. Oh, sure. Hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. How do you feel, Bob? Fine. How do you feel, Bob? Fine. How's your wife, Bob? Fine. How's your wife, Bob? Fine. How are your kids, Bob? Fine. How are your kids, Bob? Four writers got paid $6,000 for this sparkling dialogue. <laughs> Say, Bob, I meant to ask you, does Crosby here resemble his brother Bing much? I don't know. Let me see. Smile, Junior. Okay. Well, they look alike, but Bing is a little fatter around the wallet. <laughs> He's also a little fatter around the place where he carries his wallet. <laughs> Which reminds me, I'd like to ask you something, Junior. Well, what is it, Bob? I haven't seen Bing since Christmas. What did he give Santa Claus this year? What? <laughs> well, Bob, you know Bing. He doesn't splurge too much around Christmas time. He gives his biggest gifts on March 15th. Amen, Amen brother. brother. <laughs> Say, Bob, how come you haven't seen Bing for such a long time? You're both at Paramount, aren't you? Yes, but they changed our dressing rooms and we're not next to each other anymore. I meant to tell you, Jack, they gave me your old dressing room. No, really? imagine that. My old dressing room. Gosh, I can still see, still picture it. Start right <laughs> through gosh. anywhere through there. It's all fun. <laughs> That's no, what they I did, did, Jack. Just... What? Uh, no, I had an old dressing room. I was I okay still... in your line. I yeah, see. But... <laughs> Well, I, you know, I can still see my old dressing room. There's a big landscape painting on one wall, a window on another wall, and what's on the third wall? Six wash basins. <laughs> now, Bob, let's get going. I won't talk until you look at your watch. Oh, yes, road to Bally, road to Bally. Gosh, two minutes go fast here. Thanks, Jack. Now, there's something I want to do for you. What's that? Well, I wrote special lyrics to my theme song, Thanks for the Memory, and I'm going to sing it to you with a sportsman's quartet. Oh, that's swell, Bob. Come on, let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the lucky strikes The pack you gave to me of LSMFT Is more than I expected Thought I'd have to work for free Oh, thank you so much <laughs> Thanks for the lucky strike A sentiment we share You hear it everywhere A lucky strike is better made Just tear and then compare Oh, thank you so much Listen, Bob, on your new program Can you use a hungry quartet? Of course, and I'll pay you in jello. Yes, all you can eat. Oh boy, what a treat. Well, thanks for the offer, Bob. We'd really like to go and be part of your show. But we are stuck with Benny and for very little dough. But thank you so much. We like the taste of a lucky. There's nothing as good, no, there's nothing. For real smoking pleasure, start puffing. A lucky strike, the smoke you like. So thanks for a lucky strike. The smoke we all enjoy, no loose ends to annoy. From Florida to Washington, from Maine to Illinois. So thank you so very much.
was wonderful, Bob. Not only did you sing the Lucky Strike commercial well, but you've got the only nose that can tear and compare. <laughs> By the way, you haven't met Dennis Day yet. Huh? Hello, Mr. Hope. Oh, hello, Dennis. You know, I saw your very first road picture, the road to Singapore. Really? Yeah, and then I saw the road to Morocco, the road to Zanzibar, the road to Rio, the road to Utopia, and last night I saw the road to Bali. No kidding? Yeah, and now that I finally met you in person, I'd like to tell you something. What? You're nothing without Bing Crosby. <laughs> Are you E-flat idiot? <laughs> I may... I may cut the strings off you and let you just dangle. <laughs> Is this fugitive from Glockamora sticking his tongue out at me? No, that's an antler. <laughs> Now, let's get on with the sketch. What sketch? The road to Bali. Good. I got a free one that time. <laughs> I know, but I'm putting my watch ahead. Well, let's get on with the sketch. Okay. Hey, Jack, who's that lying down on the floor? That's Don Wilson. He's the road. <laughs> He's certainly got the valley for it. Say, hey, Jack. What? I couldn't think of anything to say then, so I thought it was better to shut up. Oh, <laughs> what? I was trying to think of a freeway line, but I couldn't finish it either. <laughs> what? Well, Jack. Yes? I think it's only fair. I think it's only fair for me to play the part I created in the picture. Well, naturally, so I'll play Bing's part. No, Jack, since Bob here is Bing's brother, he should play that role. Hmm. Well, what what can I do in the sketch? Well, you play the part of the giant octopus. Now, wait a minute. I'm not playing any octopus. But it's a very important part. I don't care how important it is. Imagine a man of my position in show business playing an octopus. But, Jack, it motivates the whole picture. You see, the octopus guards a sunken treasure worth millions of dollars. Well, get me six more arms and let's go. <laughs> I'll set the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, Paramount Pictures presents The Road to Ballet with Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, Dorothy L'Amour, and starring... The Octopus. <laughs> Curtain. Music. My name is Bob Hope. Crosby and I left Australia bound for the South Sea Islands to look for sunken treasure. We landed on the island of Vatu and became hopelessly lost in the jungle. For days, we wandered through a tangle of vines, and then we came to a rubber plantation, went through it for quite a stretch. <laughs> rubber stretch? <clears throat> if I'd known I was gonna get dialogue like this, I'd have worn top hat and white tie. No pants, you gotta get laughs, you know. <laughs> As we reached the clearing on the other side, we were surrounded by a fierce tribe of cannibals and their beautiful white princes. And my agent <laughs> The princess came up to me and said uh, Me, native princess, who are you? Oh, how do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob What's Cooking Hope Telling all you cannibals that while I'd like to bring you joy Don't look at me when you want to put something in the pot, boy <laughs> uh, No worry, my tribe not eat you You very handsome man Oh, wait a minute. You don't look like the real princess. Real princess not here. She want money. All I want is you, baby. Kiss me, toots. Hey, wait a minute, Dennis. You read my line. Oh, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. Look at the script. It says, Bob, that's me. It says, boob, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Some sketch this is. It's crazy enough to have Jerry Colonna in it. <coughs> ah, greetings, Gick. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not even in this sketch. How can you make love to the princess? I don't ask questions, I just have fun. <laughs> hey, Bob, what about me? Beat it, Octopus, you come in later. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm getting out of here. Come on, Bing. When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. Our long trek through the jungle. Then our bad luck began. We had no food or supplies. 
At night, we had to light fires to keep the animals away. Then our water supply ran out. We had nothing to drink. We went three weeks without a bath. Then the animals started lighting fires to keep us away. <laughs> down into the lagoon when the sunken treasure lay seven fathoms deep. We got into a boat and rowed to the exact spot. Well, this looks like the place. Don't you think so, Bing? When the blue of the night <laughs> meets the gold of the day. <laughs> now, look, I'll put this diving helmet on you. There. Now go over the side and look for the treasure. Attaboy, Bing. Go down and get it. Here comes the giant octopus. That's me, folks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The giant octopus ate up my pal Bing. Octopus, octopus, say something. When the blue <laughs> of the night meets the gold of the day... Ladies and gentlemen, the flood of increased enrollments in our schools will create a critical situation within the next few years unless action is taken now. By taking an interest in our schools, all of us can help make sure that the community we live in gets the best education for the money it spends and provides the best possible educational opportunities for our children. So please join and work with local civic groups and school boards. Remember, better schools build a stronger America. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment. But first, a word to cigarette smokers. Nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And remember... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike, lucky strike. Friends, taste makes the big difference in cigarettes for nothing. No nothing beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. But don't take my word alone for it. Just listen to this and judge for yourself. A nationwide survey based on actual student interviews in 80 leading colleges reveals that more smokers in these colleges prefer Lucky's than any other cigarette. By a wide margin, too. And the number one reason the students gave for smoking Lucky's was better taste. Yes, and I know you, too, will find that Lucky's taste better, cleaner and fresher and smoother. So enjoy the full, rich taste of fine, mild tobacco in a better-made cigarette. Yes, be happy. Go Lucky. Get better taste today. Be happy. Go Lucky. Get better taste today. Bob, I want to thank you for appearing on our show tonight and letting us do a parody on your picture, The Road to Valley. I'm glad to do it, Jack. Good night, Bob. Good night, Jack. So long, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to hear The American Way, starring Horace Height, for Lucky Strike every Thursday night over the same station. I'm sure you'll enjoy this great new program. Consult your newspaper for the time. Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned now for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.